In this talk I will show an exercise consisting in modeling in 3D using Fusion 360 an object looking like a wicker construction. In order not to make the presentation too long, the chosen object is relatively simple, a trivet. Its appearance is similar to a disc made of intertwined wicker strands. For the 3D modeling we can imagine that the necessary volumes will be made of pipes only. Most 3D modeling software has a function to draw pipes of constant section extruded along a path. The difficulty of this presentation lies therefore mainly in the tracing of these paths. They will have to be planned in such a way that the resulting pipes will never interfere with each other. During the first seven and a half minutes of this presentation I am busy drawing five sketches. I am now at the first sketch that will allow me to make one of the pipes that will serve as radial support for the trivet. This first pipe will be duplicated by circular pattern to form a set of spokes. The sketch will also make it possible to make small pipes in the center of the disc that will be connected to the spokes in order to obtain pseudo diameters that will not interfere with each other. At the very beginning of the presentation I had introduced some parameters to make the dimensions used in the sketches more visible. Indeed, I prefer to introduce named parameters that allow a better understanding of the initial thoughts that preceded this exercise rather than introducing numerical values that are not very meaningful. For example, diam is the diameter of the circular section of the pipes, and angle is the half angle spacing each of the spokes. The parameter segment designates the minimum value of the circle radius allowing to braid a wicker strand as tightly as possible in a spiral by alternating entanglement between the radial strands. As a reminder, a wicker strand is a pipe of diameter diam in the context of our modeling. The parameter Z is the number of spokes. The parameters angle and segment depend directly on Z. Here I finish the first sketch. I will come back to it later to complete it and make a correction. I now construct two planes perpendicular to the radial axis. The next two sketches will come to rest on them. I am now drawing the second sketch. It contains a half undulation inscribed in a square and consisting of two arcs tangent to each other and tangent to the upper and lower sides of the square. These two arcs are the premises of a spiral braid path as close as possible to the center of the disc. It's now time for the third sketch. It also contains a half undulation inscribed in a rectangle and consisting of two arcs tangent to each other, and tangent to the upper and lower sides of the rectangle. These two arcs are the premises of a spiral braid path at the edge of the disc. I now come back to the first sketch in order to complete it. I begin by placing two radial lines on either side of the central axis initially placed. These two lines are used as a reference to insert two arcs placed at the level of the planes that supported the two previous sketches. The angular distance of the ends of each of these arcs is twice the value of the parameter angle i.e. the distance between two spokes of our wicker disc. These two arcs will be used in the fourth sketch. I come back again to the first sketch to add a spline curve that will be used at the end of the modeling to connect two radial strands into one that will cross our disc entirely. I previously called these connected strands pseudo-diameters. And here we are at the fourth sketch. I'm not going to trace anything explicitly. It will contain two implicit curves, the intersections of the half curves drawn in the second and third sketches with the arcs that we have just added on the first sketch. 
I come back one last time to the first sketch. I come to correct a dimension allowing to lengthen somewhat the spline curve recently added. Otherwise it seems to me that there would have been an interference between some connected radial strands. Four sketches are finalized. The fifth sketch requires some preparation. I switch to surface mode in order to generate a circular and wavy surface body. I first retrieve the curves of the fourth sketch that I designate as profiles for the loft feature. I obtain a first angular surface. I rotate it so that one of its edges is aligned with one of the origin planes. This makes it easy to make a joined copy by mirroring using this plane. I duplicate the result using the circular pattern feature. As expected, I obtain a circular and wavy surface body. In fact, all surfaces are not yet a single body. I use the stitch feature to link them together to be one single body. Back to solid modeling, I use the coil feature. This function directly creates a finished solid. I choose the spiral type. I place it in the center of the surface disk and make the beginning of its involute coincide with the inner edge of the disk. We are not interested in this solid as such, but its use combined with the wavy surface will make it possible to obtain our fifth sketch. The spiral can overflow from the outside, this is of no importance. But there is no need to bother with it either. A spiral and a wavy disc. What to do with that? Here we are. The fifth sketch of course. As for the fourth sketch, I'm not going to draw anything explicitly. I will simply project an edge of the triangular profile of the spiral on the wavy disc. That's it for this last sketch. But that's already a lot, the result is a spiral and wavy curve. Sketch work is completed. Let's move on to the modeling of our wicker trivet. I braid a first strand using the curve of the fifth sketch as a path for the pipe feature. The result is immediate. I am now braiding a second strand. It is a simple copy of the first one. I rotate the copy 180 degrees. It goes fast. In two shakes of a lamb's tail our trivet seems almost finished. The spiral strands are finished, but the radial strands remain. Let's display the first sketch on the screen only. We retrieve the central axis that we use as a path in order to obtain a first spoke via the pipe feature. As I announced at the beginning of this talk, I duplicate this spoke by circular pattern repetition in order to obtain all the spokes. We could stop here and consider our wicker trivet finished. The result of the tangled radial and spiral strands is successful. But I find that the void left in the middle of the disc is not realistic enough. And it is an interesting challenge to propose an elegant solution to fill this void without any strands interfering. I add two small strands in the center. The first one has as a path the small initial portion of the central axis. The second one has as path the spline. I make symmetrical copies. Again, symmetrical copies. Now I make copies with translation and rotation. In total we get 9 small strands, they will serve as connectors for the 18 spokes.
All we have to do now is to connect these connectors to the spokes. The connection is made using the loft feature. We will use it 18 times for each of the 18 spokes. We will make sure for each of them that the connection is made with the tangency option G1. It's a simple and repetitive task, a bit long, I'll let you enjoy it in accelerated mode. I had some slowness when performing this feature, at times Fusion 360 seemed to be spinning the wheel. Now yes, our wicker trivet is finished. Let's take a look at the details, the strands are nicely intertwined, and there seems to be no interference. Let's finish with some rendering on a musical background. Thank you for your attention.